working properly here. Okay. Funny. All right. Yeah. Okay. We're we're live right now. So, uh, well, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we're uh, this is the first time trying to use Zoom and do a, a Facebook Live thing. So, if it cuts out for anybody, we'll quickly uh, start a new live feed. Um, so just hang in there, and hopefully we can work out all the kinks. Um, but my name is Evan Kaufman. I'm the director of the Southeast Fairfax Development Corporation, and we are a nonprofit on the corridor that's working to really stimulate economic development and help develop the new Embark plan, which is to revitalize the whole Richmond Highway corridor, kind of from uh, where you are in the Woodlawn area up to the Capitol Parkway. And uh, so we wanted to do this highway happy hour segment because we recently started this new COVID-19 business directory and just letting the residents know what businesses are open and how they can order from them and support them. Um, and people can find that on our website, sfdc.org. But when I saw uh, Andrew in the Woodlawn Press Winery pop up on there, you guys submitted your info. I was like, how cool is that? I didn't even know that there was a winery on the corridor. So I thought that was awesome and I had to meet you. So. Um, Andrew Rosado is the owner of Woodlawn Press Winery. So tell me a little bit about how you guys got started here. I mean, when you think of a winery, you mostly think of, you know, a big vineyard and grass, but you guys are pretty much in a shopping center on the corridor, right? So how does that right. work? Tell me about yeah. That. Yeah. So that was uh, kind of the whole concept of when we started, um, just to kind of have an urban winery slash micro winery, winery feel to it. Um, but uh, and obviously that's different because, you know, we don't have a vineyard or anything. We, we actually outsource everything from the state, uh, outside of the state, uh, from the West Coast, mostly California. But, okay. but the, I guess the way we got into it, me and my wife, was uh, about eight years ago, I think it was, uh, my wife's cousin, who live up in Washington County, PA, which is about 45 minutes south of Pittsburgh. They opened up their small winery um, then. So through them, that's how I actually got to learn winemaking and, and everything associated with that. Um, then, funny enough, about two, 2017, my sister-in-law and her husband opened up their small micro winery down in Virginia Beach. Uh, and now we're the third kind of in the family to do it up here in the Northern Virginia area. So this upcoming July will be our uh, one year anniversary. Um, so, so that's how we kind of initially got the idea. Um, and, and part of it too is like, you know, obviously we, like I said, we don't have a vineyard or anything and we wanted to do it different just to kind of bring the experience to, uh, you know, a city environment so that you wouldn't necessarily have to travel an hour or, or two away where you can kind of get the same uh, intimate experience here uh, with a variety of wines that we do make in-house where, where, where it kind of uh, varies with sweets, uh, sweet fruit wines whites and then reds and now we just started featuring about two weeks ago our wine slushy so that that's on the menu now um so so yeah it was definitely kind of a a couple years of of uh of planning and and just talking with family members to pick their brain to see or to pick the best course of, of action of how to approach this and open it here off the route one corridor yeah so you you come you've come into a family of wine uh, wine aficionados, I guess you would say, um, yeah. and and that's really cool. So, how, were you always into wine, or did you get into it like after you met your wife? Or yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, if so, funny, <laughs> funny enough, uh, when uh, so when me, my wife and I were dating at the time, she, uh, I got to meet her cousin uh, who oh, who just opened up their winery about two years when when I first met them. And that's when I picked it up as a hobby. I actually picked it up as a hobby right before I got out of the army. Um, like a year right before I got in the army, I was just doing it just just, just because it was fun for me. Yeah. And then after that, I kept going and going and it kind of progressed and then it snowballed. And then that's when my sister-in-law opened. And then um, it, it's funny because even now, I'm, I'm talking to them constantly. Um, I'm really talking to my sister-in-law about like Virginia kind of do's and don'ts. Uh, just because they've been doing it a little bit longer than I have. And then I'm talking to uh, 
my, my, my wife's cousin about more technical stuff because they've been doing a lot of create creative crafty stuff with their wines um that i kind of pick their brains so it's definitely a nice to kind of lean out to them or reach out to them and 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 pick their brains but yeah it was definitely a hobby and um didn't really expect it to go this way except um you know that once the train started we can get off yeah well it's nice that you've got this built-in like technical support team around you that you could call and ask people and um and i know a lot of people you know i've heard of um brewing beer you know at their yeah. house home brewery but i don't hear about too many people doing wine so how does that process work if you're making wine there at your facility are you guys yeah. crushing the grapes there fermenting it do you have tanks yeah. how does that yeah, so so what's nice about that is um, so we source uh, everything out of state. So what's nice about that is that it's already pressed and crushed for us. So all we get is the juice. So we have stainless steel tanks for right now, um, and everything's made in the back. So I, I get the juice, and we start ferment, fermenting from there, and then uh, rack and let it age and stabilize. But about a month ago, uh, we just got uh, our second manu manufacturing facility open in Warrington, Virginia. So that's going to allow us to do more wine and possibly uh, finally get some barrels out there and do barrel aging. Um, but here, it, here in the Route One corridor, this would this would be the only tasting room that we have. So, because I've gotten that question a couple of times. Um, if we open up the Warrington place, would we do a tasting room out there? It's like, not, not now, it's solely for manufacturing. <laughs> right, yeah, right. solely for manufacturing, but it just allows us to uh, double, if not triple our uh, output. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we, uh, we're definitely doing stainless steel um, and we'll move into oak barrels. But with our reds, I do use oak stabs, French oak stabs. So you, it still has the essence of being in a uh, barrel. Um, it's just a, you know, trick almost like what um, uh, distillers distillers use in in their oak um, barrel. So, um, so yeah, so it definitely allows us to approach things a little differently um, and probably a little bit more efficiently, um, just because we don't have to press and crush. And then, uh, you know, using stainless steel uh, is easy cleanup and reusable as well. So yeah, so you really, I mean, you could still kind of decide. I mean, after you get it, then you kind of decide how you want it to come out, how long you want it to ferment, what kinds yep. of fermenters you use, which all kind of decide the flavor and the taste and the outcome of the wine, right? Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. So, um, well, real quick, I wanna mention um, the background behind me, I'm using one of these, you know, Zoom backgrounds, you know, this is from a butterfly exhibit that we featured on our Facebook page that someone did in one of the communities. Uh, I thought it was really cool and I liked the way that it gave my head kind of wings and after drinking some of this wine, I kind of feel like my head does have a little bit of wings. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to put up a photo here of some of your offerings, um, which is really cool. You got a great selection. I actually got delivery from you guys, which came really quickly. And I'm drinking this Route 1 raspberry. Uh, I got to put it next to my face for it to come. <laughs> um, but it's kind of a, a little bit sweeter. And then I've got this Sangiovese. Yep. Um, I like the way that sounds Italian. Is that maybe I'm guessing a lot that, of that, yeah, that's where it originated the grape originated from. Yep. Okay. And then I've got this Pinot Grigio here. Um, so tell me about a little bit about the, the differences in these wines and, and kind of why people might be drawn to one wine versus another, maybe what your favorite one is. Yeah, okay. So uh, with our fruit sweet wines, um, they're sweeter. Um, they're, they're lower with alcohol percentage. They're uh, around eight or 9%. Um, they're not dessert wine sweet, sweet. So they're not, you know, thick or high in alcohol content. They're just an easy sipping kind of wine, especially our peach, which is popular in the summer. Um, just, just easy going. Um, but with the fruits, uh, a lot of uh, fruit flavor to it, very smooth. Um, and we do have a, a, for example, cherry out right now, um, very smooth, but not tart. And that, and that kind of surprises people because they're expecting something a little tart, tart, uh, tart in their mouth. Um, but so that's a little surprising. Our newest seasonal one though, is a pear or pear wine. Um, very, um, uh, kind of full body for what it is for being a sweet wine, but it, it's packed full of pear uh, to it. And then uh, with it's kind of with the raspberry you're drinking as well, 
Uh, the raspberry is probably the least of our sweet wines, um, but it, it, it does, it, it is packed with a lot of raspberries in it. Yeah. Um, with our whites, um, we recently, uh, maybe about a month or two ago, we, we released our first white blend, um, which is a stainless steel, which is a, a blend of Vignet and uh, Pinot Grigio. Um, so we, we like Vignet and that, that's actually a, 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 kind of a popular one in Virginia, but, um, you know, me and my wife tend, tend to like it a lot. So that's why we just wanted it to, to make it as well. Um, but we do have our, our own version of Vignet, uh, Pinot Grigio and then Sauvignon Blanc, which is very smooth. And, uh, about, I think it'll be ready next month, uh, a new white blend, which is going to be Chardonnay Vignet. Uh, no Chardonnay and Vignet, so a little bit more full body, which I think some people are uh, are looking for as far as some of the feedback I've been getting. So that that's mm -hmm. that that'd be a nice summer uh, kind of white sipping wine as well. <clears throat> and then with our reds, uh, yeah. And then and then with our reds, I've I've been playing with it a little bit more so with blends because me and my wife tend to enjoy blends. Um, so we just released our second blend. The first one sold out a couple months ago, uh, but this one is, it's, um, it'll, it, I, I'm planning to keep it kind of, uh, I guess you can call it like a flagship <laughs> one, uh, but it's, it's our blend of Cab, uh, Cab Sav and Merlot, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's the Mission First blend. Um, so that's, that's, that's one of my favorites right now uh, between that and the Zinfandel, uh, which is uh, the Zinfandel's uh, full body, um, very juicy, a lot of uh, tobacco, coffee aroma to it with uh, French oak as well. Um, so that, that's one of my favorites right now. And then we kind of have a, a um, surprisingly light cab franc, um, lighter in body, uh, um, still high in tannins though. And, that, and that's kind of a, a, a nice, what I like to call like dinner favorite, um, as well as the San Giovese. I like to call uh, the San Giovese like my favorite table wine, table, table red wine. Yeah. Uh, goes a lot with uh you know foods for dinner whether it's pasta uh steak you know some type of meat uh so so that's that's kind of my go-to for dinner but um but we do have some new uh other reds coming out uh a new blend coming out later this summer um still aging a little bit um and then we'll probably do a third red blend later on this year um and we'll probably have a uh, so one fun note, um, we'll bring this back our, uh, we'll bring this um, back our one year anniversary, um, but we do uh, make glitter wine. Uh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> so that's just a fun one. What it is, is uh, honestly, it's, so it's a, it's a raspberry take on wine, uh, but I just put edible glitter in it and it just shimmers. Uh, so it's edible glitter and, and it kind of um, just floats in the bottle. And uh, that's, that, that was a fun one we did a couple months ago. Or, right before christmas and that sold out pretty fast as people were buying it for gifts and everything so the, the um, that, that's just another fun wine we'll bring back later does the glitter affect the taste at all or it's just no pretty? no it's just just solely coloring it's just like coloring to it yeah yeah that's cool that's cool yeah. I mean, <laughs> the bottle stand out um and what about the you know um you know myself i'm i like wine but i wouldn't call myself an aficionado by any means I think my girlfriend is because whenever I'll buy a bottle randomly and, you know, she'll come stay over and the bottle will be gone the next day. And so that's yeah. how uh, yeah. you know, I kind of know what, which wines are good. But um, she, we were talking a little bit earlier about a, the age of wine and how does that affect wine, you know, being a, an older wine? Do, do all wines, should all wines be aged or is it particularly for some? And I know some people, you know, some older people have told me that age is nothing but a number, but I don't know how that applies to, to wine. Is that true or? Yeah, so I guess our approach is a little different. I mean, we tend to do it on the younger side um, just because of stainless steel. It's, um, there's not much really to age in. Right. Um, kind of our, our rule of thumb is, is um, you know, two or three years. Um, you, know, at, you know, when we first opened, there were probably a year, um, you know, aged or actually in the, in the, in the tanks. Um, but for what we're doing, you probably wouldn't shoot for anything over two to three years. Um, you know, if we had our own vineyards and, you know, had more involvement with the growing and kind of, uh, uh, kind of babysitting of the actual product of the grape, then we could probably, um, age it a little longer, especially when in, uh, barrels. And then if we had like a proper, you know, cellar and everything, right. um, but, you know, kind of given the fact that we got our, our urban winery, uh, uh, approach going on, 
um, that, that's why we kind of shoot for that two to three year mark. Um, but what's nice is that, like I mentioned, with our Warrington location, um, it will allow us to uh, do that proper two to three years, whereas like now it's, it's around one, one and a half. Um, so it'll, it'll get us a little up to what we, we want it to ideally be, especially with our reds. Um, and then, like I said, as we move into oak barrels, that will definitely sit nicely and then uh, have some barrel series that we'll be coming out with. And, um, and actually, I'm looking into a couple whiskey barrels as well, just for some some take on some some new reds that we'll, we'll probably do later in a couple of years. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, it sounds like you've got some really cool business plans and are growing. I guess you probably didn't write in a worldwide pandemic into your business plan when you started this thing. No, uh, not sure. at all. How is that affecting you guys? Is it is it dramatically changed business, or are, are you getting a lot of delivery and pickup orders? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, especially when this whole thing kicked off, we we literally set up our online store within like less than twenty four hours just to allow people to pick up. And then um, working through licensing, uh, we finally, we got our delivery license so that we could actually deliver. So between those two, since we had to actually close down our tasting room, um, we honest, we can only do pickup or, or tasting or uh, pickup or delivery. Um, so, you know, thankfully that's been keeping us busy. Um, but now, um, actually yesterday, we just started our walk-in hours um, so we're still, we're still not doing any tastings, but, uh, people can walk in and, and get a slushy if they want. Uh, we do sell chocolates, uh, some other retail items that people can pick up and, and pair with their wine. Um, <clears throat> especially if they're running, if they're running around, um, or picking up, uh, food next door, uh, cause there happens to be quite a few restaurants next door to us, um, that are, that are pretty popular for pickup right now too. Um, so yeah, so we, we definitely had to adjust, um, but uh, th thankfully it was, um, we had a lot of loyal customers <laughs> and, yeah. and, and far reach, uh, cause we ended up opening up the delivery to all of Northern Virginia. So that, that was yeah. pretty nice. Um, but yeah, so we're still, we're still trying to get the word out there too, because even though it's been about 10 months for us, uh, since we've been open, um, a lot of people are still, I guess, haven't heard about us. So, you know, but between, um, between just like references from other people that, that have tried our wine or uh, just kind of a, a online advertising through Facebook or what have you, um, you know, we're still getting the word out there, but thankfully uh, uh, between our repeat customers and, uh, and, and new customers that we got now with like wine slushies or, you know, what have you, <laughs> we're starting to pick up. So that, that is definitely, we're definitely thankful for that. That's awesome. That's awesome because that's you're definitely a business we want to keep around, and and it's kind of the perfect pandemic business because everybody should have some wine uh, on hand. Um, yep. So tell us how if people want to order some wine for delivery or pickup, um, how would they do that? Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, every, and anyone can visit our website, which is wpwinery.com. And then on there, you, it'll take you directly to our online store. And then from there, you can either select uh, for pickup or delivery. And then right now, um, we, we say delivery within 24 hours, but we're, we pretty much are getting deliveries within the same day. Um, so yeah, people don't necessarily have to worry about that unless you like live out in Manassas or something. Right. Um, but a lot of local um, deliveries have been made within the same day. And then pickup, so you can do scheduled pickup on there. Uh, so you can identify a time uh, between basically 11 and 7. What, uh, what a good time would be, uh, what a good time would be for you to come here and then pick up. Um, and then the thirdly, um, we just started walk-in hours. So uh, Wednesday through Friday, 3 to 7, uh, anyone can walk in. Uh, pick up a slushie or any other retail stuff, um, Saturday 2 to 7, and then Sunday 2 to 6. Um, so th that's just the third new option. And then hopefully by the end of the month, we'll see, um, you know, when the phase one starts happening for Northern Virginia, and then we'll kind of plan from there as far as tastings um, are concerned and, and what that will look like then. So, All right, well, that's cool. So WPWinery.com, um, yeah, they definitely deliver fast, and it's it's really good stuff. I'm really impressed i really like uh, this raspberry i haven't opened the other ones i gotta wait for my girlfriend she really wants the san Giovese to try that so uh she's in richmond but um so yeah check uh check them out get your wine um real quick i want to we're gonna do a, a trivia real quick where we're gonna 
pay to get some wine delivered to to some people who get it right. Did you have any trivia offhand, like wine trivia? Otherwise, we have some corridor trivia. But if you've got something, um... so um, yeah. So I I was thinking about this, and and the one thing I had to actually dig do some digging um, because <laughs> I, I say that too because so we use uh, synthetic cork. And a couple of people asked, asked me why I, I, I wanted to use that. Um, but for me personally, I've, I've had more success with synthetic pork, just with, with uh, wine not spoiling. Um, you know, you really don't have to baby it. Whereas with real cork, you know, you have, you have to make sure it's moist, put it on its side so that it keeps that way. Um, so for me, it's just a no-brainer just to go with synthetic. So, but I, I, I kind of wanted to go to, back to the history of corks in the first place. <clears throat> um, so, uh, so the the one question I, I uh, kind of formulated after doing some research was uh, uh, a true or false que question, <clears throat> um, which is uh, co has cork has been used to well, excuse me, true or false? Uh, cork has been used to seal wine containers since early Roman times. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, they could have been using something else at that time. Maybe they didn't have cork or, you know. Exactly. So yeah, yeah that, that's, that's something I, I uh, was thought a little interesting. So I, de I definitely wanted to go back, back a little bit. Sorry, yeah. my daughter. My daughter. Yeah, yeah, Google it, just true or false. And we'll pick a, a winner at random, somebody who gets it right. And you'll have to tell me because I don't know, make sure we know after. This yeah, time. yeah. Uh, but we, we really appreciate your time. Um, and I guess that's one of your professional wine tasters behind you there who yep. does a lot of the sampling and makes sure yep. quality control. Yep. She's our, our assistant delivery lady. <laughs> right. She might be driving to your door with the wine. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but she does, she's not drinking while she's driving. No, <laughs> no yeah. she's drinking her juice. Right. She's got her apple juice. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, very cool. Andrew, it was a pleasure to virtually meet you and I hope to come in there and maybe do another live video when we're able to come in there and do like some live sampling. I think that would be really cool. Uh, and so yeah, check them out, wpwinery.com, Woodlawn Press Winery. Uh, they're on their corridor or local micro winery, support local businesses. They've got a great product. Uh, you did a great job. And uh, I'm gonna look forward to uh, talking to you again soon. So thanks a lot for doing this. Awesome, thank you. All right, and now we are going to bring in um, Caesar. Uh, Caesar Argueta uh, is one of the owners of the Papusas Express um, on the corridor, and they have amazing uh, Latin cuisine, um, El Salvadorian, Honduran, um, and we're going to bring him in to talk a little bit about that. Uh, let's see. Caesar, are you with us? Uh, it says it's connecting now. Uh, let's give it a sec. Um, yeah, for those that don't know, you can look up Papusas Express. Um, they're located on the corridor. They deliver. Um, and it's probably best if you call and, and order delivery because some of those apps are, are taking away money from the businesses. Um, but they do a, a great job. Their Papusa, I have the carne asada which is amazing. Um, I've had some of their pupusas um, and you guys do a great job. So Caesar, thank you for joining us. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your restaurant and what you guys offer here on the corridor. Are we live? Yeah, we're live, so. Oh, okay. It's because I have my, hear I, you. Yeah. I'm watching you I'm watching on my computer, my laptop, and then uh, I also have the Zoom app on my phone. And so I don't know which one. <laughs> okay, I'm well, gone. both of them. You're good. Yeah, we could see you and hear you, so just go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you very much for um for having me uh, here in this virtual happy hour. It's really great. And um, Pupusas Express is a we offer authentic and delicious El Salvador's cuisine. Yep. There you go. The, well, actually, let me let me let me talk a little bit about the image that you have in the background. Okay. 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 That image is our Pollo con tajadas. Actually, it's um that that image I took it when the, the plate wasn't yet complete. So there's still one more step on that. Okay, it looks uh that looks delicious by the way, but it looks even more delicious in once the actual final product gets made. Really? And, and there you go. And it's pollo con tajadas. And this dish is actually a Honduran dish. 
Um, you know, Honduras and El Salvador, they're right next to each other in Central yeah. America. And our cuisines are very similar. But this dish in particular is a Honduran dish. It's a, it's a, a green fried bananas with a, a breaded and fried chicken on top and cabbage law and tomato sauce. And uh, they call it aderezo, which is a mayo, ketchup, uh, and, um, and mustard sauce. And it's just delicious. But uh, Pupusas Express in general, um, you know, we are, uh, we are predominantly, um, we offer authentic and delicious El Salvador's food. Yeah. Um, our main item, of course, being, um, are you sipping one of the San Joveses that, uh, that, the, per, that the previous guy uh, talked yeah. about? The Route 1 raspberry uh, is really good and probably be go, go great with this dish that's right behind me. I might need to order this tonight because I think it would be a perfect pairing. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. You know what? I was actually listening. I didn't I get to hear the entire, of, um, you know, your entire interview with uh, with the gentleman before me. But I was talking about wines, and I love wine, and definitely our food pairs well with with, with wine. So hopefully, uh, you know, which uh, well, we, we don't have alcohol in, in our restaurant, just food and and non-alcoholic beverages. But um, but anyways, back to your question, back to your question, and what did I do yeah. here? Uh, I brought. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. So our main item here at Pupusas Express, uh, pupusas, uh, pupusas is the most traditional item on the, uh, on the menu, all right? Explain on the menu. what a pupusa is. Pupusa is the most traditional item in El Salvador, okay? It's, uh, it's what uh, pupusas are to us, what tacos are to Mexican, what uh, wine is to Italian, what- um, Hot dogs you know, are to Americans, maybe ingrained in our culture uh, they are tortillas filled with cheese okay with chewy cheese like say mozzarella for example uh, the original traditional it's called quesillo but we don't find that here and it's very very costly to bring it but the cheese we use here is just as delicious and as great okay so they're tor tortillas filled with cheese and in addition we use other fillers all of them have cheese in addition to cheese we have beans, we have uh, ground pork, chicharron, we have ayote, which is zucchini, and we also have uh, loroco, which is a flower that it's, uh, it's native to El Salvador, to Central, I'll say native to Central America for sure. I'm not sure about Southern Mexico, but I'm not sure about the other countries in Central America, but definitely in El Salvador we use this flower called loroco and, and it's a typical filling in, our, in, in, in the pupusa. So it's very authentic to what you would actually get in El Salvador if you were there and went to one of the restaurants. It's Well, that's absolutely, that's why I say authentic. You know, we're, there's, we're not such a thing as a, an Americanized version of our food. Right, no, okay, right. it's authentic El Salvador's cuisine. Yeah, it's not like... General Tsao's chicken. I lived in China for a while and they don't know who General Tsao is over there. You know, we made that up to sell yeah, chicken. Here. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We want to, we, we want our, the community, we want our customers to taste the real deal. No, I love Latin food. In fact, I, in college, I had three Latin American roommates, one from Guatemala, one from El Salvador, and one from Honduras. And they would love to take me to the salsa clubs and just kind of watch me flail around like a gringo on the dance floor. Meanwhile, everyone else looked like a professional dancer because I think you guys grow up learning how to dance, right? Did you grow up in El Salvador? I mean, it's part of the culture. And, you know, I grew up watching TV. So now I'm with all these professional da dancers and they're just laughing at me, trying to, you know, get a rhythm going with these professional, um, you know, salsa and, and merengue. We are known to be party people, and you know my recommendation to you before you step into a salsa dance floor is just have a you know a sip or two of uh, of that wine. Uh, that's a, absolutely you'll be yeah. you'll be a professional. That's what I, I might, do. I might need a bottle um, to get to to that stage, but whatever. Well, that, that whatever. might make you fall. Yeah. Or you trip on the lay, or you trip on your partner, and then you make your partner fall. So I don't wouldn't recommend a whole bottle. Well, that's the thing in the in the you know uh, a lot of the Latin dances, the men really have to lead and you got to be good and the women you know follow and it's an amazing i love you know latin dances i mean it's just an amazing you know it, 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 it looks difficult but it's not it's look difficult but it's not it's just um it's just basic step 
and then once you learn the basic step, you know, you can roll, you know, roll around, spin around, but the, the basic steps is just a matter of getting, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Right, seven. right, right. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, will eating your food help make me a better dancer? Yes. Okay. That's yes, because food happy. makes people happy. Yeah, and when, when you eat great food, you know, you're just in a cheerful mood and you just want to dance. And yeah. you don't care if the world is looking, you just, you're dancing, you know, you're just dancing around. Just dancing around happy. Well, I'm going to be placing a, a massive order from you before the clubs open up, whenever that is, so we can get back <laughs> dancing. But I've, I've tried your food several times, and I've always been impressed. Uh, the carne asada was just cooked perfectly with like a hint of lime and the right seasoning. It was, it was so good, and I've had the pupusas, so I'm a big fan. So tell people how they can order. You guys are doing delivery and pickup right now, right? And how, yeah. how does that work? Yes, of course. Well, thank you for bringing the carne asada because our name is Pupusas Express and we don't want our, our, our customers to think that we only have pupusas. Um, we, the, the, uh, we actually have a full menu of traditional items, not just the pupusa. Like you mentioned, the carne asada, um, carne guisada, which is a, a beef stew version. Yeah. Um, we have maritierra, which is the surf and turf. We have a full menu of just delicious El Salvador cuisine. Okay, and um, we, um, we are online. You can order online at www.pupusasexpress.com. Sorry, I started to talk about the name before going to that, into um, explaining how to order. The, uh, so the name Pupusas implies, implies that we have a full range of delicious um, food, El Salvador's food. The word express, um, the, the word express in English tends to sound um, like quick, right? Fast. Right, right, right. Express in our name doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean uh, quick and fast because our food is not fast food. It's delicious, fresh, made from scratch in our kitchen. Nothing yeah. is pre-frozen, nothing is, you know, stuff like that. So the word express really means that we deliver. You know, we are one of the first restaurants of our type, of our food, to actually offer a delivery service. Now, the del our delivery service, it's a self-delivery, self meaning it's, we control the, the deliveries. We don't, we don't partner with wow. third-party apps such as Uber Eats or DoorDash, DropHub. We prefer to do it ourselves because we can control the drivers better. Right. You know, here in, in, the, in the Manassas location, in the, in the Herden location, um, they have, you know, they have a lot of delivery drivers because they're, 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 they've been around for, you know, four, three years now. We've only been around for about five months. So we are, we are, are at our growing stage. We're yeah. doing really good until COVID hit, but we're still doing great. Okay. okay. But, uh, you know, our, our delivery operations, we own them, we manage them and we want, and we want to continue that path because we want to make sure that our, our food get to our customers safely, right. hot and delicious. And I think, you know, by us, do, by us doing the delivery ourselves versus partnering with the other apps, we are in better control of that. So we offer a full menu of delicious Salvadorian food. We offer delivery service, but you can also, we, all, we also offer curbside pickup. We do a lot of curbside. When the dining room was open, we, we offer dine-in. Yeah. Free delivery within a four mile radius. Okay, we go all the way to Huntington. We go all the way down to Sacramento, all the way to the river by wow. Telegraph Rail Seal. We, yeah. we, 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 we deliver as, as yeah. far as we can, but uh, within a four mile radius, is, uh, it, it, it's our limit. Uh, okay. We do curbside pickup. Uh, pick up, you can call the store, 703-780. Uh, you can order online. And let me yeah. uh, tell, you, tell you a little bit about the online ordering. Well, real we quickly, have, we only got a minute. Apologize for that. We have rewards. We have reward points, okay? And okay. we also, just today, we went live with gift cards. So we have okay. gift cards for the community to support us. We have reward points to reward our customers for, 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 for tasting our food. Right. And order online, free delivery, curbside pickup, delicious food, make you a better dancer. Absolutely. And you can find their info on our directory at sfdc.org. You'll see our uh, COVID-19 business directory. Their business is listed there and you can just click on their website and order or, their, or give them a call. Um, 
but I highly recommend uh, this food. I know from experience, I love it. I will be coming back. I appreciate what you guys are doing, taking the safety precautions needed to make sure everything is done safely. I don't have my face shield on or my mask. I was showing your face here. shield earlier, but yeah, they are uh, taking this seriously to make sure people are, are getting their food safely. Um, so check them out, Papusa's Express. Caesar, thank you so much. And, and same, um, as I said before, with uh, Andrew, I want to come in and do a live video when we're allowed to come in again and maybe, you know, take a tour of the food live and, and do some, you know, sampling. And, um, Let's be patient. Let's be patient. Yeah. And, right. uh, you know, I, I, we invite the community to support us. Actually, the community has been very supportive of us. So yeah. we, we thank the community and, and, and we welcome and, we, you know, we invite you to continue supporting us. And not just us, all the other small restaurants. Yeah, in the, that's in the great. Area. And maybe I can get a professional gig as a food critic so I can just eat every day and get paid to do that and write reviews. So this will Should be the that. start when I come in there. You're already sipping on wine, so might as well just eat some good food. I know. I know. I got it all. Wine, food. And now we got art coming up with uh, Jennifer Drob, and we're going to do our art demonstration. So Caesar, thank you again. We'll see you real soon. Um, and the people know how to find you. Go to Papusa's Express and get some delivery yeah. or pickup. Thank you. All right, thank Bye -bye. you. All right, so next we have Jennifer Droblian, who's a, a local artist here on the corridor. And uh, she has done a, a couple different demonstrations before. And I'm gonna show you what you're gonna be making here. It's a really cool fish concept. Um, hey, Jennifer, can you hear me? Uh, it says it's connecting right now, so it'll take one sec, but um, I am by no means an artist. Um, I can sometimes look at things and draw, but I am horrible at uh, just this kind of stuff, creating this kind of stuff. So I'm always in awe of people who can do this. And, and you do this for a living, right? I do. Yeah. So a lot of uh, it's I'm a very lucky girl because uh, it took it took a long way to get there, but I ended up working for Arlington County government um, in their Parks and Rec division, and I'm a community art specialist. So this is kind of my my jam. That's awesome. Um, so have you noticed that you've been doing this um, for a little while virtually? You've done it a little bit, um, and obviously everybody's kind of getting bored, especially if you got kids, I know it can be tough trying to keep them occupied and stuff. And so are there some specific art activities um, at home that you remember doing, doing as a kid when you were a kid? Did you grow up doing like different art activities and creative things, putting things together? Was that part of your you know, childhood? Yeah, actually, it's so funny you say that because uh, my mom and I were just reminiscing about, I used to have this big giant tin of crayons and it must have weighed like three pounds and I just carried it around with me everywhere I went. And I colored on everything. Really? On the walls. walls and... <laughs> you know, and, uh, and probably on places where I shouldn't have, but you know, that kind of what got me started. Wow, okay, so yeah. if any, yeah, kids are listening in, just start coloring on everything, on the furniture, the glass, everything is free game. And that's yeah. how you become a professional paid artist. Um, but you know what I will say I will say you can buy those um, uh, those window markers and you can also buy soap crayons and those are really really good for for kids you know yeah, so nowadays, I wish I had those when I was growing up because that would have gotten me out of a lot of trouble <laughs> everything was permanent back then but now they got all these special technologies that make it erasable and you can paint and take it off real quick um, that's right. that's well right. that's cool so and you you're on the corridor, you live in the in the Beacon area, is that correct? Yes, I live in the Woodstone development of uh, Groveton. Okay, okay. So yeah, our, our goal is to really bring this Richmond Highway corridor together and really embrace our, our local businesses, our creatives, our artists, and, and just really create a stronger community. I think there's a great community here. I'm kind of new to the community and I'm just really having a good time learning about everything that's going on and all the different people. Um, that are doing cool stuff. So tell us about what, uh, what you're gonna be helping people to make here um, through this virtual stream. Well, it's really cool you have my samples right behind you. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. So that's a, that's a cool flair um, little thing that you just did. But um, this is my uh, example for today. Okay. 
And um, what I did was I changed um, the background color. Uh, I, I like doing like the back deep sea color, but the purple's are all right too. Um, and then um, I did a little a bit of, uh, you know, complimentary color action here on this fish. So purple lavender is um, the, the complement of that color is, um, is yellow. So I wanted to do a nice complement between the, the fish and the background. So oh, that's, yeah. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of what we're gonna do today and talk a little bit about, you know, color theory and stuff as we go. But um, with um, one thing that I know that we all have a thousand pieces of, whether it's in the recycle bins or whether or not it's just in your house waiting to be tossed, um, all these darn cardboard boxes that we don't know what to do with, that just keep gathering and gathering. Um, so for this project, you would just need a cardboard box. And, um, you know, this is just the flap of a box. And, uh, and we're going to take and use the texture from underneath the top layer of the um, cardboard to be able to get the corrugated texture underneath. Okay. So this is, this is that project. Um, but with the cardboard box, just so you know, and this is something else that, you know, you know, one box can make a million different things. You can use it as a uh, background for your, um, for your paintings, right? Mm -hmm. You can use it as a palette. Um, you can also use it as um, like swipers or like little um, uh, texture things. Like uh, you can just kind of cut this and cut some fringe and then you can use them as squeegees or mark makers. Oh wow, that's creative. So you can do that with any of that. And then also, you can also take and, you know, cut little, you can do this with one whole box, is just cut a bunch of pieces like this with some yeah. notches in it that are the same size. And then you can kind of build with them. And so like, this is my little guy that I'm just kind of wow. creating. That's, yeah. That's so nice. just keep that in mind, you know, as you, you know, there's a lot you can do with something that's free. Use what's around you. I mean, I know, I guess if you have a big box, you can also use it as a timeout place for your kid. Just drop them in there and, you know, set a timer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, we have we have a camp that runs every year in Arlington. And um, the director of that camp always and gets, uh, he goes and he gets a refrigerator box. And then the kids every week, they, they turn it into that, something right? different. Yeah, so oh, they yeah. turn it into like a, you know, time capsule. Or right. They turn it into a spaceship or... Yeah. yeah. I wish I had the imagination I did when I was a kid because you could just have fun with anything. Nowadays, yeah. it's like, you yeah. know, it's it's so much, but a cardboard box, you know, if you're a kid, you could have 24 hours of fun with a, a cardboard box. Pretty amazing. <laughs> so um, true. So, so we're going to go, you're going to do the demonstration here, right? And um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so everybody could just focus on you and your demonstration. But before I do that, I want to do one quick trivia. Um, I'm going to change my background. And if people can see, this is the original Mount Vernon open air theater, um, which was on the corridor. And so in the comments, if you can tell me what this site is today, um, you are gonna win a, a free delivery from Papusa's Express, whatever you want um, ordered for two, and we'll, we'll private message you. And then same with the, the trivia from Andrew, if you, you got that right, uh, we'll send you a private message and get some wine delivered. But uh, going back to the old school corridor, there used to be an open air theater. So what is it today? Um, post that in the comments and, and we'll pick a winner uh, and send that out. But um, so from here, Jennifer, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'll still be able to, to talk and interact. And if people have comments and stuff, I'll relay it to you. But I think people are, are tired of seeing my face and my quarantine <laughs> that I've got. So I'm gonna stop my video. And uh, it's all you, so take it away. Awesome, thank you. So yeah, so this is, um, I just printed this fish off the internet. Um, you can just, you know, image search a fish and uh, download it to your desktop and then um, copy it. Um, there's no real issue with uh, copyright issues when it comes to like downloading and changing an image to into something that's gonna be so dramatically different as an end result. So, um, so don't worry about you know thinking that you're stealing anything. But I want to show you a real quick way of um, doing a transfer on um, on cardboard or actually on anything. And then you would take a uh, oil pastel, looks like this, and I'm just going to peel it a little bit. And an artist named Paul Clay used to do this with his sketchbooks. He would sketch in a sketchbook, and if he liked his painting or his drawing, what he would do is he would work on the other side, and he would take the 
oil pastel, sorry about the shaky camera, and just darken the backside. And you can use a crayon for this too. It doesn't have to be an oil pastel. It could also be charcoal or even graphite. So even like your standard number two pencil will work. That's very cool. But this could work for magazines or any sort of thing that you want to trace. And you're just sort of like cutting a corner here. And then what you do is you just take a pencil and then draw over the lines. Oh, wow. See, that's something I might actually be able to do. I said I'm not an <laughs> artist, but I can trace pretty well. Yeah, tracing is a lost art. People forget that they can do that. And it and it works just as well as sitting and freehanding a fish or anything else you're trying to do. And so tell me, you also sell, I've seen some of your photography from around the world and I have to say it's amazing. I, I'm an amateur photographer myself. Uh, but when I saw your, your photos, I was really impressed. And um, so just let people know that your website where they could see your photos and, and order your work because it's great to be able to have local artwork in your house where you could say you know the person that you got it from and have something that was made from somebody that lives in your community. Uh, you know, hanging in your house. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for the plug. Um, so my website is, um, well, my work is at www.droblin.com, which is D-R-O-B-L-Y-E-N. And, um, but I also have what's called a smug mug site, which is where I, where you sell my photographs and where I sell them. And um, that's just my last name, droblin.smugmug, S-M-U-G-M-U-G. Uh, dot com and you can order my prints on anything you can order it but that's the printing service happens with the with the website so you can order it on a blanket or a coaster or a mug or whatever you want cool very cool and then the other thing i'm doing just um just to kind of keep myself entertained because i'm making art more than i probably care to admit <laughs> but uh what i've been doing lately is i've just been um kind of just placing these in bags um, all my little finished pieces, placing them in bags and just kind of hiding them around um, Woodstone. So <laughs> I haven't gotten any, you know, it, yeah, it's funny because some people have said, you know, are you going to put work out today? And I'm like, I already did. So <laughs> go find it. <laughs> oh, yeah, the so little scavenger hunt thing. At the, at the end, I'll probably do that with these fish. Um, because they're pretty fun to make and I've made a ton. So, but anyway, you can kind of see how this works, right? Um, you know, you get a nice transfer of your fish, yeah. but, um, and that's just, I wanted to show that to you because that's the easy way to do it. And then on the back, I kind of got started with the, um, with the carving. So what you'll do is you'll take an X-Acto blade and then you're just going to just carve around your image and then you're gonna just peel it. So this is good for kids who really want something to do and um, needs a good distraction because peeling stuff is always something fun kids like to do. I used yeah. to peel glue off my fingers and stuff. Better than peeling the paint off the walls, probably. <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of satisfying, mm -hmm. but it takes a little bit of time. So I, I wanted to get a good head start on this because I know we're very limited on time. But Perfect. you get the idea. Yeah. Let me just do a little bit more. And then go around here. And if you don't get this part finished, for those of you who are actually doing this with me, um, you can hold off and make that the last thing you paint. So getting this part painted of the fish, the positive area of the fish, you know, there's positive area and negative area. You could come and the back positive and area is the is the actual fish, and then the negative area is the space around it. Okay. Now, have you tried cooking this fish after and making dinner, or is that? <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know, I'm not a big. I'm actually not a big fan of fish. Oh, really? Weirdly enough, I like I like shellfish a lot, but when it comes to like trout or eating like whatever this guy is, I think he's called a butterfish or something. Okay. Well, they make his name sound good, but yeah, we all know how. It... 
Yeah, anything that actually tastes like a fish, I like. Nothing, okay. But I will say, uh, if I can plug a, if I can plug um, Sea Boil, holy smokes, that place is so good. Yeah, Sea Boil, and that brings me to another trivia question. If people are watching, what was we have a, a picture? Maybe I'll show you later. What was there before Sea Boil? There was another restaurant there before the Sea Boil on the corridor. What was it? Post it in the comments, and uh, you could win a prize. But I haven't been to that place yet, so the Sea Boil is good. Oh, it's so good. I think it's um, the the sauce is and the spice is I think far better than like you know like some of the um, the other like you know boil and bag kind of places that they have um, in DC. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the one, but it's you know they serve it to you in a bag and you you just it's served on paper and you just kind of they give you the mallets and the tools and stuff and you go to town on it. Love that. Yeah. So for all of these little areas too that you don't get, you can just kind of wipe them with your finger and they kind of just go off on their own. And then to get some texture, you can press down some of these to make it look a little more wavy. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, so now we're on to paint. And what I did was I just put um, some primary colors here on foil. I've got red, blue, and yellow, and those make your secondary colors. So blue and yellow make green, red and blue make purple, and uh, yellow and red make orange. And then the, we have the values, so um, black and white, and that's gonna make your colors lighter or darker, no matter you know how you work. So um, I always just work with these five uh, because it's just, um, you can make the whole the whole color wheel, which I have here too, you can, you can make the whole color wheel just based off of those three. You can kind of see here. And then like what I was saying before with the fish that I made, um, the, the color that I used for the background is um, a complementary color. So when it's across the wheel like this, directly across the wheel, then those colors are complements. So yellow and purple and red and green and blue and orange. And they always look nice if you use those two together. Wow, very so, cool. I need yeah. that just for getting dressed in the morning to know what goes with what, because I'm horrible at matching colors when I'm getting <laughs> dressed. <laughs> yeah all right so um my fish here i'm just looking at my reference here so my fish here is you know a little bit you know he's like a little bit yellow a little bit green and he's got a little bit of red here but mostly some grays and stuff so i'm gonna mix that oops, i do that didn't mean to do that um mix some color here that's kind of like that so i'm gonna definitely put a little spot of white here and kind of mix a little uh, um a little sub pool of paint and look at it. So that's about the color I want for his base color. And let's start, I'm gonna work light to dark. And I'm kind of, I'm using the sponge. Um, that was another tool um, that I had mentioned. You can just use an old kitchen sponge if you wanted. Um, nothing fancy because you're working on cardboard and it has it has a texture all its own but um you kind of want to make sure that you know you're using you know not your best brushes for this project because you know it's um the surface is kind of bare and kind of rips up your brushes if you have very sensitive little brushes okay. so i'm just gonna just paint them in a little bit here I'm not worried too much about what's around because I'm going to clean up all those lines when I do the background. Okay, so you don't have to stay perfectly within the nope. line. No, nope. and that's I'm I've never been one to do that <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm not a precise, you know, uh, I'm not a type A kind of painter. I like to just kind of mess around with stuff until it makes sense. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. No, I like that. Art should be kind of fun. You shouldn't have to stress out about getting it just right. Exactly. And if you're stressed while you're doing it, then you shouldn't be doing it, right? If or you're you stressed, you're doing wine from Woodlawn Press Winery. Oh, yeah? Yeah, wine helps with stress. So if you're stressed out while you're doing this, you need to go to the Woodlawn Press Winery, get some wine, <laughs> and then start again. 
uh, after you've had a drink. Well, that's exactly it. I think that's why these paint and sips are so successful is that, you know, the thing that I always tell my, um, uh, the folks I teach is that, look, you know, when you first get started, you have a really intimidating white canvas, you know, and no one knows what to do when they're first, when they make their first marks. And when they do, you know, they, um, it, they kind of breaks the, it breaks the tension and then you can go ahead and paint, right? So right. what I tell people is just cover the whole thing at, at once. Just make it that the very first thing you do, cover it with a neutral tone. So you kind of get warmed up and you get it covered. So like you have half of it done already. And then that sort of helps you along. So you're not, you know, you're not stressed about it anymore. Right. So. And then once you, you know, once you get into what they say is the zone, which is when you've been working for a while, you just kind of, um, you just start to get lost in time sort of stands still and, and you forget about all the stuff that you're, you know, you're worried about. And um, they call that the zone. And that's when your brain is actually like releasing dopamine and stuff. So that's like the whole benefit to art. Yeah. I mean, art has so much value and I've and being in the field of economic development, I've studied how art um, and, and funding art and cultural activities and communities can create a ton of economic development and tourism for communities. And so, you know, I know that's a lot of times one of the first things to get cut, but it's so important just for our general well-being and for the economy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that looks good. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, so what you want to do is just kind of you work from light to dark and you just kind of fill in your little, you know, you fill in with little marks. This is just a flat brush, which kind of gives me if I wanted to make like a uh, scales, it kind of helps me to make those scales. Right, right. And what kind of paint are you using there? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is acrylic paint. Okay. And acrylic paint is um, a polymer-based paint, so it's like uh, it's like painting with plastic. So you got to be really careful when you're working with kids to make sure that they're covered with an apron, and that you know they they kind of make sure that they keep them in the keep them in a, uh, like sort of a restricted area because okay. uh, this this paint can um, it can stain clothes and and cause some damage and stuff to your furniture and things. So um, but you can use anything for this, like tempera, you know, really, you know, the craft paint that you can buy at the dollar store, you know, that's, um, you know, that's a, where I like to buy a lot of my supplies. Even the brushes come from the dollar store. Um, so just, you know, don't, I always say the Dollar Tree is, is one of my favorite places to go because they have everything. I mean, they have everything there that's when it comes to crafts. Store. They even have canvases that, um, that you can get two for a dollar and they're decent canvases. Wow. Yeah. And you, you before mentioned that you can make your own paint if you're really in a pinch using some spices. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, you can use a uh, uh, turmeric, which will make a nice, like a burnt orange color or a little bit of a yellow. Um, paprika, you can use paprika. Um, but my favorite is Kool-Aid packs. You can get like five Kool-Aid packs in a container, right? And, um, and you can use that and you can use that to mix with too, because you'll get, you know, red Kool-Aid for like the fruit punch. And then you can get blueberry, which is blue. And then you can mix those colors together too. Very cool. So, what do you mix yeah. the spice with to give it the consistency? A little bit of water or milk? Or? Yeah, you can use, what I've been doing is instead of like, um, you can use glycerin, but you know, the glycerin is a little bit hard to get, but you can use like soap, weirdly enough. Okay. So any kind of like dish soap works just fine. Wow, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And it actually gives a really nice um, sort of a, a texture to your, um, to your work too, because it kind of foams up if you scrub it a little bit. Yeah. That, that yeah, that sounds really cool. It'd be cool to do a, uh a piece completely out of like food-based paints or something. I could totally do that. Yeah. And even coffee grounds is another thing you can use, um, 
you know, co like instant coffee to make uh, to make brown. Yeah. And actually, that would probably look really nice if you if you didn't have anything um, if you didn't have any of the paints. That would be a nice one for this, you know, because you would then you could just sort of stain the cardboard and work with just browns. Yeah, that would work. Um, and it might be a better use than actually drinking the instant coffee. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, instant coffee is, it's good. You know, I have one of those um, water, uh, what are they called? Uh, water, um, water bottle dispensers. You know, the, the, the gravity fed large five gallon water jug. Yeah. So I get that and, uh, and you know that's I don't even know where I was going with that. Where was I going with that? I don't know. Well, that's art. It's just all about being I'm in the zone. zone. <laughs> Get you want. Yeah, you don't have to. Do Clearly, it's I'm in the zone. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions I can answer while I'm doing this? Let me check. There is like a 10 second delay to Facebook, but. A uh, couple people, someone, uh, Anila said cool tips on color mixing and spices. Uh, someone put dish soap and Kool-Aid to make paint and instant coffee. Great advice. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. Um, you just don't want to mix up um, your dish soap and Kool-Aid with the instant coffee and drink the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure too when you paint that you keep your, um, that you keep your water uh, you're mixing water separate from your drinking water. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. So that is probably <laughs> not, you don't want to be drinking too much if you're using those kinds of paints. You might have an no, answer. For sure. Wow, look at that. That's come along and in a very short amount of time, you've got a really <laughs> fish there. Well, let me just finish. I'm going to just show you guys the last bit of it real quick because I know we're right at time. No, but I'm just going to, I'm going to add that background so you can kind of see how it forms. So again, it was like a purple. And I just want to fill that in. And so you can use a sponge for that. Oh, cool. I like that. Just to get close enough and then you can finish it off with little brushes. So how often are we going to do the happy hours? Are they um, are they going to be weekly then? Um, I'm probably going to be doing the happy hour once a day, but I'll probably only be filming it maybe once a week. Oh uh, wow, cool. But uh, yeah, we're I think we're trying to do it a weekly thing, maybe on Thursdays, and see what people think, and maybe um, have some crowdsource ideas of who they you know what businesses they want to talk to, what different art things. I like to have some. Some musicians also have some like live local concert things. Uh, and we're actually looking, you know, a big thing right now is drive-in movie theaters have been coming back. And I, I read an article about places with a lot of parking, you know, these shopping centers have a lot of parking. If we could set up a, a screen and do like a drive-in movie, I think that would be really cool. So we're, we're looking at the logistics um, and something like that. That would be so fun. Yeah. I know in, in Europe, they have drive-in like rave concerts where you, you drive in, they got a stage and then there's a DJ and everybody's just jamming out in their cars. What? Yeah, it's oh, wild. let's do that. Uh, <laughs> I um, want to do that. I would totally attend. <laughs> I'm definitely in. So yeah, we're, um, we still have our, our list corridor or creatives on the corridor on our website, sfdc.org. So if there's other creators or artists or DJs, musicians, make sure to submit your info so that we can reach out and feature you or have you at an event. Um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to be creative too so that we can keep things going and, and keep people interested in different activities uh, during this weird and unusual time. Yes, I think it's great the, what you guys are doing because I think that there's a lot of there's a lot of creative folks here in this area, and yeah. I think featuring them is like it's 
it's so good because, you know, artists are really, I know a lot of people are really hurting, but artists who are freelancers are really hurting right now. Yeah, we got to figure out a way maybe with Patreon or, um, you know, selling artwork to, to raise money for artists. Um, and I know we talked earlier, you know, being in this quarantine, we're both, I think, somewhat introverts. And for us, it's kind of like, well, this is, you know, kind of nice, but I've heard that, uh, you know, the introverts now need to check on the extroverts because they're the ones that are having the real hard time now. So if you're an introvert, <laughs> you got to call your extrovert friends and make sure they're doing okay. Yeah, for sure. I, um, my boyfriend, I live with him and, and he's an extrovert and I'm an introvert and I just, I hide from him now. I just, <laughs> <it's> just <laughs> I just, I just hide from him because he, you know, the poor guy, he just, he wants to talk you know, and check in with me. And I'm like, ah, oh, too much. Like, right. <laughs> I'm going into the zone. I'll, I'll let you know when I come out. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, this one really coming along. So I'm kind of happy with them. I like that. Maybe we can auction that fish off and raise some money for a cause hey i can do that easily um yeah well, or if somebody i can mail it to somebody and they can redeem it at a restaurant or something yeah that would be cool maybe we start the bid at uh ten thousand dollars you think that's <laughs> i like that okay. give it give it all to them yeah we'll do a, a fund so what do you how do you when you when you're you finish it off here do you do anything you just let it dry kind of and then you could hang it up or frame it or do whatever you want with it i guess yeah you can pop it in a frame um uh because it's a you know it's just a flat piece you don't need a you don't even need a mat or anything you can probably just put it flush against the um a board or something um but yeah i mean i think uh it would probably look really nice in like a really wide mat or a nice frame yeah um i mean the texture i mean if you that in a frame, i think it would look really cool just because that texture of the cardboard it like makes it really pop off the the material yeah yeah, yeah i've been kind of addicted to these lately oh that's a little too dark so is that that's just, the eraser comes with the set? <laughs> well, the good thing about about acrylic paint is until it sets, you, it's pretty flexible. You can mount, you know, it's malleable. You can work with it a little bit. Okay. So you can, ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry about that. So you just take a little bit of water and you can brush it away. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and then you just tinker with it. Um, you know, you can even take a, like a Sharpie or a, a felt tip pen and, and define some of the areas. Yeah. Like so. But yeah, just one little piece of cardboard and an exacto blade. Very cool. Well, uh, Jennifer, I really appreciate you doing this. And I know other people who are looking for stuff to do at home with their kids or even just with themselves to have some fun and be creative. This is a, a great, easy idea you can do at home. Um, and all the materials can be found on our website, sfdc.org. And if you want to see more of Jennifer's work and perhaps purchase some of her, her artwork and photographs, which are really amazing pieces of work, they can go to, tell me again, the website. It's my last name, droblin.smugmug.com. And droblin is spelled D R O B. L Y E N, correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Dot smugmug.com. 
Um, and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram um, as um, just my last name. So just at Droplin. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm going to come back in here and we're going to do one more trivia. Uh, so behind me is a picture of Gino's hamburgers and KFC. Uh, and thanks to Mark Viani for providing these picks. He's our board chair. But this was uh, some old establishments on the corridor. And let us know what this site is now. What is there now that used to be the Gino's hamburgers and Kentucky fried chicken here? Um, put it in the comments and we'll pick another winner. Um, and we'll be private messaging uh, the winners to get their details and get them prizes. But uh, Jennifer, uh, really appreciate again your time. Uh, I think we're gonna end it here. We've gone a little bit over, but I think people have really enjoyed it. And then we're gonna share this video on our page. Any final thoughts or tips you wanna add? No, just um, if you have any um, if you have any questions or anything about techniques or anything, I'm happy to answer them. So um, I'll also look at the, the Facebook live and um, I'll respond to any questions you guys have or if any if you're troubleshooting any kind of projects and things with your kids, I'm happy to help. So that's great. Yeah, you find her on Facebook uh, or on our website. Uh, there's probably a contact feature. I'm sure you've got plenty of different ideas to keep the kids entertained and involved in something that is going to benefit them instead of just maybe watching TV uh, during this quarantine. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll probably, like I said, I'll probably be hiding these fish all around the community. So <laughs> keep an okay. eye out. Yeah, and we'll post, we'll keep it up. We'll update the people on that scavenger hunt and give them clues on where they can find uh, the little scavenger hunt items that you're doing and the pieces of art. That's a really cool idea. So follow us on our Facebook page. Uh, make sure to join our e-newsletter so you can find out about our future events because it's hard to market over Facebook. So if you text the word SFDC or the initials SFDC to 22828. So send a new text message and put in 22828 uh, is where you're sending it and put in SFDC as the message hit send and it will ask you for your email and then you'll join our e-newsletter and we can update you about everything happening on the corridor, future highway happy hours, future art events, um, and hopefully uh, help build a, a stronger community here on the Richmond Highway Corridor. So thank you, Jennifer, okay. and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Evan. All right. Take care. Um, bye. Goodbye.